Uh, we're going to start with uh, Meng Sun, who's going to tell us about Titan physics okay. and binary evolution. Thank you. All right. Yep. Thank you. And uh, it's a really great honor to be here to give a like overview talk about tides uh, in general. So yeah, specifically today, I'm going to talk about tidal physics in binary evolution. So um, to begin with, I would like to uh, start with uh, these three effects during the post main sequence evolution in binaries. Um, so the first effect is that, um, so when the uh, primary star in the binary system, they become a late type star, for example, RGB star or an AGB star, the, st the, st the stellar radius will expand like, for more than the one AU in radius. So all the close in planets or a secondary star will be engulfed by this expanding star. And uh, the second uh, effect is that instead of waiting for the stellar expansion, if there's a like a, if tidal effect is really strong, so tides can bring the second object inward and then to meet the primary star. Um, so and then the system could be merger or like <coughs> uh, like mass transfer. And uh, the third effect is that uh, due to the strong stellar wind from let's say any of the star. So instead of a system shrinking, system will actually expand during the binary evolution. And for this case, all the close in binaries or stars will be survived um, from merger or mass transfer. And let's see a real case, like a real like study for this three effect. So on the plot, these two panels, I'm showing a sort of like a, a binary separation trajectory as a function of time. So like y axis are the semi major axis between the like in the in binary system between the, this is the distance between the two objects. And uh, the x axis is just just a time. And we can see um, there's uh, like this line actually represent the, the primary star's radius. And specifically this study focused on AGB um, like evolution. So we can see like the star radius going up and down. This is just due to like AGB thermal pulses. And all the merger case are represent with this red lines, this series of red lines. And we can see this um, left panel, like given a Jupiter mass companion, so before the merger is actually ties play an important role that grab that uh, or Jupiter mass companion in and then meet the star and destroy the system. And all the survival case are here, like showing as a black line um, system keeps expanding and uh, it will become like finally it's like still two isolated object in the end. And uh, something different, like let's substitute the secondary as a Earth's mass companion. And for this size of, or like this mass, ties is no longer that important. Cause like we can see like before the merger cases, the system separation just maintain a constant. So like system actually destroyed by the expansion by the, by, by the star itself. Okay. And the next is the basic idea um, <coughs> like of how ties change the orbit. So like people who study ties actually can be like date back to uh, more than a hundred years ago, starting from George Darwin's theory of ties. So um, let's focus on this cartoon plot on the on, on the on the top. So here we use this big circle represent the primary star, and uh, because of ties, like friction causes tidal bulge to lag behind the companion. So these are two like tidal bulges, and uh, this is the, this point it just represent the secondary like star or planet. So people define this lag angle like between the uh, the peak of the tide and the position of the secondary um, star or like object, and even either even even simplified model uh, we use this two point mass to represent this two tidal bulge, and we can see the secondary will feel like uh, forces pointing to like different directions from the like highs on the at the close side and the further side. And also like the combination of the force can produce a torque that can slow down the motion of the secondary star and then system will shrink. And if we like, let's say transfer this physics prescription into a real equation, let's say we want to know uh, the rate of change in semi-major axis as a function of important stellar and binary parameter. This is the format we use. Uh, and uh, some interesting term I would like to mention is that uh, the rate of change in semi-major axis a dot is very sensitive to primary star radius and to the eighth power at here and also is also very sensitive to the system distance the system separation uh, another thing that was mentioned is that uh, this is called a uh, lag time and in the traditional way let's say the constant q like tidal model 
we usually like treat this term as a constant. Let's say we have a very uh, well observed system and we calibrate um, this, this number like by observation and then use that single number applied to all the system. Sometimes it doesn't quite work and lead to like order of magnitude difference compared with observation. So in the like future slides, I will talk about some other way for calculating or for, understand, for, for, that, for understanding how ties like modify the uh, system uh, orbital parameters. Okay, so there's like two possible regimes for like tidal evolution. Uh, the first case is that if the uh, companion object is a low mass star or like low mass uh, object or like low mass uh, planet. So it doesn't have enough angular momentum to synchronize the orbit. So once the tidal effect is really strong, uh, the secondary will just like doing like this. It's just spiral in and system merge due to ties. And if the secondary is a relatively like massive companion, it has enough angular momentum to synchronize the orbit. So when tidal effect is really strong, um, like the, the secondary could experience like a small like spiral in. And then after it reached the synchronization radius, it will keep some like a stable, this, this stable feature for a long time scale. So like the takeaway point for these two different cases is that synchronization like can sort of uh, make, make this uh, system more stable and uh, uh, survival longer like before merger. Okay. And uh, next is the physics of the tidal flow. So although this talk is about ties, but I cannot avoid mentioning another um, term called astroseismology. Um, astroseismology um, like studies the self-excited mode that inside the star uh, that the, this whole process can be like deal with like um, treated as um, simple harmonic oscillators uh, for ties or like tidally driven uh, wave. This is actually the problem of a force oscillation because like we have a secondary in the system and we act like orbiting around the primary star. So it is actually give a periodic force like onto the primary object. So like for people, yeah, study ties or like study astro seismology, we actually deal with very similar like wave equations inside the star. Uh, the only difference like between our equation with, uh, with their equation is that uh, we add a tidal acceleration in the momentum equation for non-adiabatic oscillations. So these two terms and uh, the, um, the numerical response like, like due to this uh, well, by solving these equations, um, like the major component of tidally like tidal response is actually two major components. The first uh, type of ties or like the first component is called the equilibrium tide, which is the um, non-resonant or the instantaneous response um, due to tides. So if we like observe like those big waves near the surface of the sea caused by the moon, they all like a kinds of equilibrium tide. Um, another solution is called like, or another major component to the numerical solution is that called dynamical tide. This is the resonant excitation of the like star's internal gravity wave. So like resonances is the key word like linked to dynamical ties. And if we uh, go to see a real stellar structure on the top panel, so I just like use a one solar mass as an example. So inside is a is dominated by radiative zone, and outside the star has a composition of a convective envelope. Okay, so the bottom panel is the corresponded like uh, wave amplitude as a function of fractional radius. So we can see in the stellar radi radiative zone, the solution is has this very oscillatory feature. This is actually the, yeah, the, the, um, the this is dynamical tide, like have this oscillatory feature. And near the surface region, the solution is act actually dominated by the equilibrium tide. So we don't observe any os oscillatory feature. So this is a, a little bit difference between these two type of tides. Oh, all right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, after talking about like um, the wave excitation, let's talk about a little bit um, the, the, the damping mechanism. Uh, the first uh, important damping mechanism is called turbulent viscosity damping in the stellar convection zone. This is the major like damping physics in uh, damping the equilibrium tide. So tides could create some horizontal motion near the surface of the star. So let's focus on this top like cartoon. So let's say we have a lower layer moved towards uh, left and upper layer moved towards right. And if, if we have a test particle from the lower layer, so it actually carries the momentum towards left. So if we like, if this particle move to the upper layer, it will actually uh, reduce the relative motion between the lower and upper layer. 
And so, in, but but in, in the stellar convection zone, instead of those particles or molecules, there's actually some big eddies like in the stellar convection zone that trying to like slow down the relative motion between the lower layer and upper <clears> layer. And by some fluid mechanics, um, like an analysis, we actually can calculate this tidal, this process and lead to a tidal dissipation rate. And we use that tidal dissipation rate, like can convert to uh, orbital parameter change, which is observable, could be sometimes could, could be observable. And then like compare with observation and to constrain our tidal physics or like tidal model. Okay, the another uh, very important damping mechanism is called the radiative damping or radiative diffusion damping. This is the major damping mechanism in the stellar um, in the in the dynamical tide. So dynamical tide is actually like wave propagate inside the star. So during the wave propagation, so some of the region is compressed. So like which which means they are a little bit hotter than the their their neighbor region. And yeah, and some and, and their neighbor region could be rarefied and relatively cold. So heat can diffuse from this hot region to cold region. And if the uh, diff heat diffusion distance is greater than the wavelength, so I would say like this wave will be strongly damped or strongly affected by this radiative damping. So um, on this plot, I'm just trying to give you guys a, a real idea how uh, radi radiative damping can cancel the wave-like uh, like response. Um, uh, the, the black dash line represents the adiabatic solution which means we don't take into account of radiative diffusion damping. Sorry, this, this like the, this, this plot here, I'm showing like wave amplitude, uh, excited like uh, high order G mode or like internal gravity wave. Um, this is a wave amplitude as a function of a, fr a fractional radius. So like if we don't consider any radiative diffusion damping, the tidal response is still have this um, wave-like or like oscillatory feature. But if we do in running the non-adiabatic solution due to ties, the behavior is actually like of the wave is just be, have a very smooth function like inside the star. So it's more close to the, uh, the, 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 the equilibrium tide solution. Okay, and um, um, so, okay. So we, we are sort of finished that those physics like important physics in tides. So let me uh, introduce an, uh, a, a, a tool that uh, called gyre ties, uh, which is the new open source code to model like stellar ties or like bi like tidal ties in uh, binary uh, bi binary systems, so um, regular gyre actually deal with uh, free oscillation um, like equations or like solving for like eigen modes or eigen frequencies eigen functions in the uh, in the inside a star like self um, driven mode and. Uh, Stays back to like a year ago, uh, we add a new important functionality to gyre called gyre ties. So now gyre can do like forced oscillation. So the reason why I introduced this open source code is that um, this is the only I think it is the only oh, this is the only open source code for calculate the stellar response. And we have an active um, maintainers team just trying to just keep uh, updating year by year. Yes, and uh, also. Um, like I said before, um, the traditional way for calculating tidal dissipation rate could lead to a big problem when compared with observation. Let's say we usually kind of like by the constant Q model, we usually like overestimate the orbital uh, orbital shrinking rate and over and sometimes underestimate the uh, orbital circularization rate. So yeah, so the gyre ties doesn't suffer with these limitations because we don't do any approximation. So this full numerical solution like for like solving those like tidally forced um, equations. And uh, Jared has, has also like has like wide applications. Um, I will say that uh, for any of the uh, massive star in binary systems, we can just feed in the code with a stellar profile and also as well as a uh, binary configuration, we can calculate the tidal response onto that massive star. <clears throat> okay, um, one of the another uh, motivation that we develop gyre ties is that there's uh, new types of star have been discovered uh, after like Kepler launched. This is called like hot beat stars or like hot beat phenomena. Uh, the name of the hot beat actually comes from the its light curve. So we can see like um, the light curve of this system is just doing like it's more like a uh, cardiography. So just like uh, um, a doctor. Diagnosed patient 
by seeing the cardiography. So astronomer or astroseismologist or people study tides, we can actually probe the inner structure of the star by checking those light curve. And the, the strongest peak at the center here, this is actually caused like major by the equilibrium tide. So that means when there's a secondary star pass nearby the periastron, so like the, the star will be a little bit like reshaped so like causing this major peak right here in luminosity or like flux variations. And we can also see like some small solitary feature. This is just caused by the resonant excitation of the star's dynamical ties. When the, uh, the secondary is no longer near the stars, uh, the, the binary periastron. Um, the heartbeat phenomenon is more observed in mass massive binaries. Right? Uh, and uh, they, 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 they are all in like very eccentric binaries. Um, okay, although like I spend most of my time right, starting from my PhD, like doing 1D simulations, but I do have some, we, we do have some like fancy movie to show you this uh, <laughs> heartbeat stars. So let me just start with maybe one cycle here. I, I hope that works. Uh, I can't see the bar. Let me just try close the, the laser pointer. Uh, No. Well, sorry. I don't know how to turn off this laser pointer. So then because they, there should be a bar that I can start play the video. Let me try maybe. Oh, wow. Um, no. If we can assume the annotates. Or is there a way that we, I, there should be a bar here. Or... Oh, right here, I, I saw that, yes. Great, thank you, Jared. Okay, so you guys see like, okay, this is near periastron, we see a strong peak. And even like the star away from the periastron, we, we observe some oscillatory feature near the surface of the star. Okay, one functionality for gyro ties I would like to show here. Uh, this can be used to um, study how the tidal response, like due to, uh, like let's say we force the star in different frequency. Let's see the tidal response. So this here we study a very typical heartbeat uh, system called KY fifty four. There are two A-type stars orbiting each other, like mass around two point three and orbital period about forty two days. And uh, the plot here, I'm showing the radial um, amplitude or like also like the surface flux as a function of forcing frequency. In this region, we actually like force the star in a relatively slow rate. So the tidal response is dominated by the equilibrium tide. And uh, in the right part of the plot, um, which means we force the star in a relatively really fast rate. So we observe some resonances, um, like some low order, like internal gravity wave have been excited. So we see like those spikes, they all like resonances near the surface of the star. Okay, another functionality in gyre ties uh, we can do is that uh, we can also calculate the rate of change for, for many like important orbital parameters <laughs> such as semi-major axis, eccentricity, the spin rate of the primary star, also like the torque exert on, onto the star. So here I'm showing a, uh, uh, a plot um, doing like y is y axis is the uh, time scale for orbital circularization rate as a function of orbital period in days for a five solar mass main sequence star uh, with a 1.4 neutron star as a companion. The neutron star just treated as a point mass. So we can observe that the general trend for this time scale is that for if the system is really close, let's say 2.5 days, uh, yeah, the, the time scale is relatively shorter compared with the, the, the let's say, the, the, if we put the system in the five days orbit. So this is just due to like the tidal strength. It has like, a, has a distance dependence, like close system, stronger ties, like smaller time scale for uh, orbital change. And we also observe this uh, dense like forest of um, like th those peaks and spikes. This is all actually caused by the resonances of the star's internal gravity wave. So that's the response of the dynamical tides. All right, so um, I would like to just leave my summary plot, uh, sorry, some summary slide here and take questions for yeah, anything about ties or like the code. Thank you. Thank you.
questions. Uh, let's just get the yeah sure. Oh, there's a my. <laughs> Yeah, thanks. Great overview. Um, I was curious. So you mentioned this like uh, forced frequency. So can you say a little bit more about what that is and like how, like I can use that to compare with like observations or like real stars? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, the forced frequency, or like uh, to simplify this issue, we can just treat the orbital uh, frequency like to like as forced frequency, definitely like close in orbit. Then we force the star in a more like fast way, right? Yeah, so we can just treat like orbital frequency the same as forcing frequency. And also if we take into account the star rotation, so actually forcing frequency could be a little bit different. That also depends on the spin frequency and also the orbital frequency. And then we can get a like forced frequency. Um, compare with star, one thing, yeah, we definitely can compare with the like light curve. And also I would like to, yeah, one thing maybe worth a mention as well, like this hot pit phenomenon, not only observe the massive binary system. Um, nowadays, like within this uh, recent five years, this hot beat phenomenon were like uh, called, um, um, were like secondary object induced pulsations onto the primary star. It can, it also observed in exoplanetary systems. So like a hot Jupiter can also like raise strong tides in this kind of system or like on, onto a star. So we all like see like also can, can still see like some, yeah. Um, like her, we're do, doing a like Fourier transform. We see some peaks like, in, in the frequencies, like space. Yeah. Hi. <coughs> uh, thank you for your talk. I think heartbeat stars are very cool. And I wanted to uh, do something with population synthesis and seeing if we can model the population of these. Mm -hmm. But I haven't looked too much into it just yet. And do you think any of your results could be easily implemented yeah. in these calculations? Very good question. You know, like one thing I, I'm kind of worried, like let's say, um, can we like really, let's say, write uh, the tidal dissipation rate as a function of um, some stellar parameter that is easy to, let's say, getting from Mesa model or some like global quantity of the stars. Um, for equilibrium tide, that's okay. But for dynamical tides, you, you know, like it also depends on like those like strong like spikes makes me kind of worried or like um, whether if there's a strong resonances really sensitive to stellar structure. And those, let's say, where's the convection or the radiative convection boundary? Where's that? So like very sensitive to that. So maybe like right for that situation, let's say I want to write energy dissipation rate or tidal energy dissipation rate as a function of star mass or star radius or like system separation and so on. It's really a challenge. We may lead to a very, I mean, inaccurate um, a dot or E dot. So th this is my, my words, but maybe maybe to the first order of magnitude, at least we can get the equilibrium tide a response. So yeah, but like definitely better than constant Q uh, model. So. <laughs> Thanks. 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 Um, oh, you can hear me, nice. Yep. Um, I was wondering, can you use the uh, duration of this heartbeat feature to constrain the eccentricity? In your binary, or is it degenerate with some other properties of the binary? Oh, I see. Yeah. Um, or I would maybe some like the observer at this room may better answer this question. I would guess yes, like duration or maybe residual of the like uh, the signal can also like or or just we, if we have RV, we can just solve the like we can solve the we, ha we can have an orbital solution, and then orbital solution definitely contains the eccentricities, also like period or. Yes. But most importantly, you should be able to constrain the inclination. Oh, yeah, right. That's much more, much harder to do. Ah, right, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, right. And the solution of ease. The, so in a typical eclipsing binary, you need uh, RVs and the light curve to get E uh, sine right. omega and E cosine omega. The solution mm -hmm. for that is much more unique in the, in right. the photometry from a heartbeat alone. I see. Yeah. So definitely more constraints for like, or you even eclipsing binaries. So, um, sure. How much? I, I, I love dark It's beautiful. Thank uh, you. I, I wanted to ask you. So I, I imagine that in any case, it is solving uh, uh, the equations uh, in a linearized way. Mm, oh, right. Yes. That's so a, I was wondering if in uh, the heartbeat stars, 
could there be some nonlinear effect? Because it looks like the, the deformation is quite large, at least from, from the plot. I'm not sure if it's the case, but uh, could there be some nonlinear effects that come into play for heartbeat stars? This is a very, very good question. Um, there's a third damping mechanism I didn't mention at my talk is the nonlinear damping. When that phenomenon is, um, I mean, uh, important, um, we we need to really need to worry about like nonlinear damping or nonlinear effect or like when the even the excited like uh, the the amplitude of the the wave if it's bigger that could lead to like nonlinear physics. Um, I mean to implement nonlinear ties in gyre ties now is quite challenged because we do linear ties. If we implement nonlinear like tidal analysis, which means the the basic functions we need to rewrite or like the code like from the basis need to rewrite. So um, now we are searching for like a, maybe a simplified way for doing. We're maybe doing like traveling wave approximation or um, some something else for heartbeat for, for this KY fifty four system. We we like I mean the the, the model sort of match the data pretty well. Um, other mess because um, we th there's not too many works like specifically focus on one heartbeat system, make a very precise model and doing like ties or astrocytes model analysis. So I don't quite know if uh, other system also works. I hope hopefully, yeah. But um, but like nonlinear effect, uh, my impression is that more important for low mass stars. So that's the reason why I keep saying for massive stars or like massive binaries. Uh, Jared ties can do some very good estimation in, in tidal dissipation rate, uh, but low mass stars um, or like any stellar structure close to the sun, we need to be careful. Like we may underestimate those energy dissipate or like the tidal dissipation or like rate of change in orbital parameters just because um, nonlinear effects should be taken into account. And also, I know people study white dwarfs um, nonlinear like way nonlinear ties also like is very important. Yeah, for studying white dwarfs. Thanks. I have a very related question. It's basically the, the same question, but mm -hmm. in terms of maximum amplitude for the heartbeats, uh, I guess because you're using linear theory, you don't really have a prediction right. for the amplitudes. And mm -hmm. I have in my head, I don't even remember. Oh, uh, we have amplitude, yes. And so is there a theoretical maximum amplitude that the oh. heartbeat phenomenon can drive? I see. I don't. I we never calculated that before. Uh, as far let, let me yeah. As far as I know, like uh, for first oscillation, the amplitude is real. Like we can definitely like calculate the amplitude. Um, like for for free mode, the amplitude is actually uh, is a sort of dimensionless yeah. amplitude. But for forced oscillation, the amplitude okay. is like confirmed. It's not like some dimensionless thing. Uh, but we didn't calculate if there's a maximum we can reach or like maximum uh, amplitude that. Still, we we still doing linear analyze analyze yeah, might yeah, be actually. okay, but yeah, maybe we can try like. I would be interested. In yeah, yeah, sure. Number. Yeah. Final question. Thanks for the interesting talk. Uh, can episodic accretion impact the heartbeat that you observe from these systems? Oh, the system I think for the heartbeat system might be. As far as I know, they are isolated binaries. Just like they, they don't have, they are not active, actively like accreting. So, okay. Uh, but I could imagine definitely if there's accretion, like light curves will be messed up. Or <laughs> yeah, maybe some some maybe H alpha emission line can appear. I don't know. I, I I have very limited knowledge on observation. Yeah. So if I I say something wrong, you guys can correct me. Yeah. Okay. Let's thank the speaker.